According to the Centers for Disease Control, more than 34 million Americans have diabetes and up to 95% of them have type 2 diabetes. So joining me now is Dr. Maya Artandi with Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. So let's talk about type 2 diabetes. What exactly is it? So I think the best way to, comp um, to explain what type 2 diabetes is, it's a disorder that disrupts the way the body can use sugar. Mm -hmm. Every cell in your body needs sugar to work properly. To get the sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells, the body needs a hormone called insulin. In patients who have diabetes, the body either does not make enough insulin or it doesn't use the insulin properly, it doesn't respond to the insulin anymore. That means that the sugar, instead of getting into the cells, stays in the bloodstream. And elevated blood sugar really causes all kinds of issues down the line. As you said before, diabetes is really common. Right now, it's estimated that about 8% of Americans have diabetes. And that number is supposed to double in the next 20 years. Wow, that is a lot of people. Yeah, so what are some of the symptoms we should look out for? So in the beginning, frequently type 2 diabetes doesn't cause any symptoms. Symptoms that people might experience are increased thirst, a need to urinate more frequently, blurry vision, fatigue, maybe some tingling in the hands and feet. So if it rarely causes symptoms, especially in the beginning, like you said, what do you, what do you look out for? So we detect diabetes with a blood test. Now, who needs that blood test? The American Diabetes Association says that people 45 years and older need that blood test. Someone who has higher risk for developing diabetes, that means someone who is overweight or obese, has a strong family history of diabetes, or takes medication that might increase the risk for diabetes, has to start screening earlier. The most commonly used blood tests for diabetes are either a fasting sugar, fasting means don't eat anything or drink anything but water for eight hours, or a hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is an average sugar of the last three months. That's a non-fasting blood test. Okay. People who are treated for diabetes actually can measure their own blood sugar at home with something called a glucometer. And I have to tell you some numbers. Sorry, I know numbers are always hard. So diabetes is defined as a fasting sugar of 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher, or a hemoglobin A1C of 6.5% or higher. A normal sugar is a sugar of less than 100 milligram per deciliter or a hemoglobin A1C of 5.7 and lower. Someone in between, diabetic and normal, is called pre-diabetic. Okay. And that just means that that person has a significantly increased risk to develop diabetes. And once you, if your diagnosis is pre-diabetic, there are things you can change to turn that around, right? Yeah, that's the good news. You can actually prevent getting diabetes. So um, there are a lot of studies out there that show that lifestyle modifications are the most important thing to prevent diabetes. The biggest risk factor to develop diabetes is excess body weight. So if you're overweight or obese, you do have a higher risk of developing diabetes. Now, if you keep a normal weight or if you try to lose the weight, your risk goes down. Exercise is also really important. So exercising 30 plus minutes on most days of the week can really help too. That is good for you. Mm -hmm. So what are the complications of type 2 diabetes? So as I said before in the beginning, type 2 diabetes doesn't cause any symptoms, so people don't even know that their blood sugar is higher. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem because over a long time, increased blood sugar can cause those complications. And those complications are really nasty. <laughs> you can get heart attacks, strokes, kidney failures that then lead to dialysis, vision problems leading to blindness. You can have pain and pins and needles sensation in your hands and feet because of nerve damage and wound healing is impaired. So people then might have to get amputations. Wow, so it I causes know. a lot, a lot does. of issues. How do you treat it once someone is diagnosed? Again, the most important part of the treatment is lifestyle modifications. So losing some weight through a calorie reduced diet, exercising is important. I have patients who went from being diabetic to having a completely normal blood sugar because of lifestyle modification and that's just the best outcome. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes despite lifestyle modifications we cannot control the blood sugar and then patients need to start on medications. Normally we start on oral medications meaning the patients take the pill by mouth and the most commonly used is something called metformin or glucophage but there are tons of other diabetic medications. 
If those medications don't work, then eventually the patient has to inject themselves with insulin. Mm -hmm. The goal of the treatment is to keep the blood sugar down to com prevent all these complications from happening. And patients who have diabetes actually need more medical care, of course, so they need at least an annual blood and urine test. They need to see their eye doctor once a year and get a yearly foot exam to look for complications. So what if there's a patient and the, per the person is not overweight, but they do have a lot of family history when it comes to diabetes? They need to go get it screened? I would recommend, if it's my patient, I would recommend screening. I mean, okay. it's an easy test, it's a blood test, and then we know more. Okay, Dr. Artani, thank you so much for explaining this to me. Oh, the sure. The numbers, I, I, I'm glad you said them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But they make sense. It's good. All right. All right, good information. Thanks so much.